Привет, ребята! Добро пожаловать на мой канал. Сегодня я хочу поговорить с вами на тему русской грамматики. I want to discuss today some key concepts, some essential concepts of the Russian grammar. So we're gonna have a look at some of the essential Russian language grammar rules, such as gender of the nouns, adjectives, how to form plurals, is there an article in Russian language, so the definite and indefinite articles, uh, the verb to be in present tense, then how to form plurals, how to ask questions. So make sure that you stay until the end of the video as we will cover all of these essential grammar concepts today. And the first thing that I want to talk about to you and one of the most essential things that you need to know as a beginner learner of Russian language is the gender of the nouns and every noun in Russian language has the gender it is a grammatical gender so the options are it can be either masculine feminine or neuter and if you're unsure what gender of the particular noun is make sure that you refer to a dictionary because it is referred in a dictionary so m for masculine f for feminine and nt for neuter so how do you know what is the gender of a particular noun and this is the ending so the ending of the word will indicate whether the noun is masculine feminine or neuter so the most common endings for the masculine nouns in singular is consonant like stall stool then the letter y like tramvai uh, also it can be a soft sign like slavai the most common endings for feminine nouns um in singular uh, in nominative case are a uh, like mama uh, then it can be ya like Tiotia, or it can be also a soft sign like titrad. So you can see that the nouns that end with a soft sign are a bit ambiguous because just because they end with a soft sign, you will not necessarily know whether they're masculine or feminine. So if you're unsure, make sure that you refer to a dictionary. And for neuter nouns, the most common endings are o, like derivo, uh, or ye, like more, pole. So the second category that I want to discuss with you is how to form plural and then this is particularly for plural of the nouns. So how to make the nouns plural form and it is quite straightforward. We have only two endings for the nominative case of the plural nouns. It is either hard or e. Now how do I know which one do I use and this is depends on the ending. So the ending of the noun in the nominative case. The nominative case is the first case. Uh, so if the feminine word ends with a in singular, uh, like mama, then the plural will be formed with the hard u ending, which is mamu. So I'm replacing the a ending uh, in singular with the hard u. Then if the masculine noun and with a consonant uh, like stall, uh, then the ending is gonna be hard u again, so stali. But in this case, because it ends with a consonant, we're not replacing the consonant, we are simply adding the ending next to the consonant. So if the noun ends with a consonant, so it's a masculine noun ending with a consonant in the singular, I need to add a hard u next to it to make it plural. So stall, stali. If the feminine noun and in singular with ya like tia, then the plural is actually may with the soft e like tia becomes ti. So the ya letter, the ya ending is replaced with e. If the masculine noun and with ya in singular, then the plural is formed with e. So tramvai, tramvai. So the y letter is replaced with e. Continue with the nouns that end with a soft sign, whether they are masculine or feminine, then the soft sign is replaced with the ending e in plural. So titrad, titradi, slavai, slavari. 
Now, what happens with the neutrinos? The neutrinos have a slightly different ending. So, instead of saying that the ending is hard E or E, for neutrinos, the ending for plural is actually ya. So, more becomes maria, pole, pala. Dereva is slightly regular and it is derevya, so we have a soft sign and ya. There are, of course, irregular plurals like chilavek, ludi, ribionak, deti, and others, which I'm not going to discuss in this video. But if you want to know more about how to form plurals and how to kind of know more about the exceptions in terms of how to determine the gender of the noun, make sure that you refer to this video where I in detail explain everything that you need to know about the endings. The third category that I want to discuss with you is how to form a negative sentence in Russian language and it is very straightforward, it's very easy. So to make a negative sentence in Russian language, all you need to do is you need to add the word near in front of the verb. So for example, if I want to make the sentence utram ya jedu na raboto, a negative one, utram ya ne jedu na raboto. You can see that I simply add the word ne in front of the verb. The fourth category that I want to discuss with you is the word order in the Russian language. And I have some good news for you because the word order in Russian language is quite flexible, which means that I can mix and match the words around the sentence without actually affecting the meaning of the sentence. So for example, if in English language the word order is fixed because if I change the word order, then I change also the meaning of the sentence that does not apply to the Russian language. So the word order is flexible. What does this mean? For example, if we have a look in this sentence, Nina kupila novoyu mashino. Nina is a subject, kupila obviously the verb, novoy mašinu object. I can also say novoy mašinu kupila Nina. So I can put the object first, then the verb, and then the subject. And then the meaning of its sentence does not mean why is that? Because the Russian language has this declination system, which means that the ending at the end of the adjectives and the nouns indicate basically in what case they are. And because they're not in nominative case, we know that this is not a subject because the subject is always in a nominative case and Nina is in nominative case. And therefore, no matter where I place her in the sentence, the meaning of the sentence is not changed, whether it is at the start of the sentence or the end of the sentence. And I just want to remind you that I do have a Etsy shop with plenty of useful resources for learning Russian language. So make sure that you do check out my Etsy shop where you will find plenty of different flashcards, booklets that will help you to enhance your knowledge of Russian language. important grammar category that I want to discuss with you are adjectives. It is very important to know for you which form of the adjective you need to use next to a noun because in Russian language there are four different forms of adjectives. There is a feminine, masculine, neuter and a plural form of the same adjective. If in English I can say beautiful house, beautiful woman, beautiful seaside, beautiful cars and I can see that the adjective beautiful itself does not change the form. It stays the same no matter what noun stands next to it and this is because English language simply does not know the grammar category of a gender of a noun and therefore the adjective can be the same because there are there is no gender of a noun in English language. Whereas in Russian language it is important for you to kind of use the correct form of the adjective because there is a feminine adjective masculine, neuter and a plural form of the adjectives. So if I want to say beautiful house, it will be красивый дом, красивый in a masculine form. If I want to say beautiful woman, it will be красивая женщина, so красивая in a feminine form. If you wanted to say beautiful seaside, it will be красивая 
Fiberiagia, so Crassivaya, neutroform, and if you wanted to say beautiful cars, then you would need to use the form for the adjective beautiful, Красивые машины, because this is the plural form of the adjective, and therefore it is important for you to know which form of the adjective you need to use. If you want to know more about the Russian adjectives and the forms and all different endings that there are for feminine, masculine, neutral and plural adjectives in more detail with more examples, make sure you check this video where I in detail explain everything that you need to know about the Russian adjectives. Okay, let's continue with our next category and this is whether there is an article definite or indefinite article in Russian language and I have good news for you because there is no articles in Russian language so if I wanted to say there is a house I would simply say там дом and you can see I simply use two words to convey the same information and this is because in Russian language we don't use articles there is no definite or indefinite article and another good news is that the verb to be in present tense is not used. I mean, there is a kind of sense of it that it exists, but we just don't say it, okay? And the last category that I want to discuss with you is how to ask questions. And this one is even easier. To ask a question in Russian language is extremely easy. Let's have a look at the example. So, if you wanted to say, is there a house, you would simply need to say, там дом which is a normal kind of affirmative sentence, all you need to do to make it a question, you need to go up with your intonation. So you need to say tam dom and that is making it a question. Now the question words, some of the main question words that you need to know is кто, for who, кто это, who is this, что, what, что это, what is this, где, где гостиница, where is a hotel? Почему? Why? Почему ты не приехала? Why didn't you come? Как? Как ты? How are you? Когда? Когда встречаемся? Where are we meeting? So these are some of the main question words that you need to know to be able to ask the question. And remember, to ask the question, you need to simply go up with the intonation and that affirmative sentence becomes question how simple is this make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to know more about the russian language пока пока увидимся скоро